I could talk all night about how much Fred Alexander means to Central Methodist. We can stand on any corner of this beautiful campus and see and feel the contributions of time and talent and treasure by Fred Alexander. The Board of Trustees recently granted me the privilege of awarding the President's Medal. They told me to award it to people who have made a lasting contribution to the college, to the people who have given sacrificially of their time and of their talent and of their treasure. Give it to people to whom the college might not exist were it not for their great dedication to this university. So with that, I want to present the President's Medal he, you can you can you can stay sitting down. I want to present the president's medal to Mr. Fred Alexander. streaming down my face when the undercover boss <laughs> reveals himself <laughs> and pays off the student loans. <laughs> you know, sometimes I just got to get up, walk out of the room, <laughs> go fold a little clothes or something. Hey, I got something in my eye right now. So. But uh, <clears throat> this is a wonderful and appropriate tribute to my dad. It's the culmination of a life well lived in service to others. It's an, it's an acknowledgement that his efforts, your efforts, have been noticed and appreciated. Uh, it, it, the story is a lot like a hiker, okay, Central Methodist in, in this case, is, who has suffered an accident in a remote location, and uh, another hiker, in this case my dad, is there in the right place at the right time, puts a tourniquet on the leg, stops the blood loss, uh, eventually rescue teams arrive and fly the patient to the hospital and doctors, surgeons, and everyone else works on him and saves his life. But if it weren't for the tourniquet, the patient dies out there in the woods. And so here the patient lives on, goes on to become something great, something nobody really could have envisioned at the time. Your life has been one of successes and of failures, and of struggles. It's been said that hard times create strong men. And my dad's one of the strongest people that I know because of the difficult times he's faced throughout his life. You know, we're here to celebrate my dad's contribution to the college, but his story is much more than that. Uh, dad attended Central, and uh, like my sister mentioned, uh, he ran a garbage route as a student. in order to help make ends meet at home. His father was not in good health. He had two small siblings at home. Uh, he's mentioned that there were times that all of the route was uh, early in the morning that sometimes fellow students would see him out and he hated that they could see him out there doing this, you know, menial work. And that's hardship. And shortly after, he helped the college through the difficult winter, provided the coal that he knew they couldn't afford at the time. Increasingly burdensome government regulations forced him to close the coal mine. And that put him into bankruptcy. 
wasn't but mismanagement or poor decision making. At that time, there were more than a dozen coal mines in the state of Missouri. Now there are none. The financial and emotional toll it took on him was massive, and it can still be felt today. And how can we tell a story about without mentioning that mom and dad lost their oldest child to cancer just a few short years right before that? They seldom talk about it. And that's hardship. But through all of that, I can say that my dad is a survivor and a fighter. And I've learned from him that nothing worth doing is easy. And that you should never give up on the things that are important. And that the outcome of things may not turn out the way you want it to, but things almost always work out for the best. Um, and some of you probably know my dad had heart valve replacement surgery several years ago. He was in declining health, and he knew he needed to do something about it or it was going to be the end of the line. And he had said he wasn't going to have the surgery, just going to let what was to be, be. And it would seem that he had given up, but I don't think he ever really did. And to me, the funny part about this story is that some of you would probably know that uh, patience is not my dad's strong suit. <laughs> And I think he just got impatient, waiting for the end to come. And hurry up and get on with it. So he said, all right, let's do the surgery. So they did. Uh, it's been a long, slow road of recovery, rehabilitation, but I, I know he's glad he did it. And after that, he said, now I'm really not having any more surgeries. But his failing knees caused a diminished quality of life. He couldn't walk, couldn't get around. It required action, so he relented and got new knees just a few months ago. And he said more than once, if he'd known he was going to live this long, he'd taken better care of it. <laughs> so. so, Dad, I just want to say that I'm proud of you. I'm proud to be your son. I'm proud to carry on your legacy. Thankful for everything you've done to pave my way in the world. Congratulations on this honor. I love you. Thanks, Grandpa.